John Batchelor, Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal. Each day at 1 p.m. East Coast time at WSJ.com is here. And this is the fun part. This is the this is the snack food part for political junkies like me and Mary, okay? Because <laughs> yes. we're going to talk about polls. This is, uh, this is, they put a big buffet table out and you're watching football. Well, that's what junkies do. Uh, geeks like us, yeah. we put a big bunch of food out and we eat and we talk yeah, polling. We kinda, yeah, we kind of sample. Uh, yes, a, a like little bit chi- of everything. Little, little chips, we a can, little... We can race the country. This, we can, yeah. and, and whenever something runs out, you don't always jump to another race. So we're, we're 11 months to go, just about 11 months to go. Moments, 12 months to go. 11 months ago, and Sean Trendy joins us. Sean, each day, watch his Twitter feed, watch how he reports at Real Clear Politics. He's the senior elections analyst. He's also the author of The Lost Majority, Why the Future of Government is Up for Grabs. And boy, today, Sean, that sure made your theme. And he's co-author of a The Almanac of American Politics, along with his colleague Michael Barone, Chuck McCutcheon, and uh, Josh Kroshauer. Uh, Sean, You have a poll today that I was teasing, but I'm going to say it again on air. It's plus seven Republicans. In other words, game over. It's in. Harry Reid stepped down. And I read that poll with a big grin on my face saying, aha, this is the trendy version of putting the Republicans on the cover of Sports Illustrated. It's never going to happen. It's the kiss of death. (laughs) It's the kiss of death. You did it, trendy. You did it. And any Republican out there racing to the real clear politics side right now. Is asking why. Why did you do this to us? You're looking at Duke on the cover of Sports Illustrated one more time to win everything in March. Sean. (laughs) I won't ask you why you did this. Plus seven now? The, the numbers are that good. I didn't know that they'd stormed ahead so far. When did this happen? Um, as soon as the government shutdown ended and people started paying attention to Obamacare. Um, you know, and more, more big picture, you know, this has been going on building for a while. Um, as these Democratic seats have opened up in heavily Republican territory, in places like West Virginia, South Dakota, and Montana, um, as we've seen prior in Begich and Landrew, in, in heavily, heavily Republican states, um, gain strong GOP opponents, we've seen this start to take shape. But as soon as the shutdown ended and the Obamacare fiasco uh, really took center stage, uh, we've seen the Republican odds uh, really, really strengthen. Sean, we talk a lot about the purple states and, you know, people like, say, Mary Landrew in Louisiana who voted for Obamacare. Now she's got a problem. Mark Pryor um, in the South, same issue in Arkansas. Um, Are there other races that we should be focusing on outside of those kind of uh, the typical states that we're talking about? You mean beyond the Romney states? Yeah, beyond the Romney states. Yeah, you know, there's these seven Romney states that I think right now are, are, you know, the Republicans are in pretty good shape, but there's these there's these, uh, you know, five or six races in these states that are just a, a, a touch more democratic than the country as a whole. Um, places like Virginia and Colorado, Iowa, New Hampshire, and Minnesota. Um, surprisingly, Michigan, which I actually would call light blue, uh, not purple, um, where we've seen Republican polling um, surprisingly strong. These races are close races right now. Um, I don't know if that will last through November of next year, but in the current environment, uh, these are seats that are very much in play for the GOP. Why I'm I'm surprised right now the Republicans are doing so well is that I thought the White House was mas- magnificent in taking down the fear of Obamacare these last weeks. Are these numbers changing? I, I know you do this every night, Sean. In fact, they, pollsters don't actually sleep, Mary. They have beepers <laughs> going off in their heads the moment new polls come in. Are these reflecting something before the November 30th and the relaunch? Uh, uh, or are these consistent with everything we've seen, which is a constant changing of what are the, what's the metaphor? They move the goalposts all the time, and nobody can tell where we are with Obamacare. You know, the thing is that the president's job approval ratings have been steadily declining right. um, since the beginning of the year. I mean, if you look at the real clear politics poll averages, uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, you can plot almost a perfect trend line over them. There's a little bit of a bump up during the government shutdown and a sharper decline right afterwards. His poll numbers have come up a tad uh, since November, but they haven't come up a lot. Um, he's still at around 41, 42 percent, which is actually a few points lower than he was on election day of 2010. 
And so therefore, because he's not on the ticket this time, therefore he doesn't help them, and that means that the, what's going on is going to remain. It's not just about Obamacare. Well, you know, it, it's a step further than that, though. Um, I think I, I pounded this in the 2012 election, that that election is all going to be about the president's job approval. Right. And sure enough, his job approval in the electorate was 54%, and he got 52% of the vote. Um, but what we find is in midterm elections is that even though the president isn't on the ticket, um, the races are still very much a reflection of his job approval. The 2010 Senate races line up almost perfectly with the president's job approval in the state. And so when he's at 40%, nationally in these Romney states he's in the 30s somewhere and then in these purple states he's you know in the low to mid 40s it makes it very difficult for incumbent Democratic senators to perform well against competent GOP candidates. Sean is there a chance that we're misconstruing these numbers and the cause and effect and that actually what we're seeing is an anti-incumbency feeling where voters just want to, 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 to kick them out because they've been there for too long? Uh, or, or is it really just about Obamacare? It's just about Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> dis- I'm disappointed. Come on, there's got to be a Come trick on, here, I'm Sean. I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. Really? Yeah. That's every, it. Uh, every One election issue. since I've been studying elections, and, and this goes back into the 90s, um, which doesn't seem that long ago, but apparently it is now, um, <laughs> has had someone put out the idea that it's going to be an anti-incumbent election. Right. Um, and it just never happens. Um, even in 2010, you know, the GOP's favorables were 10 points lower than the Democrats in that election, and yet they gained 63 House seats. So th- these elections always start out looking kind of generalized, anti-incumbent stuff, but by the time Election Day rolls around, they've turned into a referendum on the party in power, inevitably. Today, Mr. Brown, former senator from Massachusetts, put out a remark that he loves to ride he- motorcycles without a helmet. Live free and die, uh, because that's what he loves about New Hampshire. Which is what happens if you ride a motorcycle without a helmet, <laughs> it's, by the way. It's really bad yeah. information. Uh, everybody riding a motorcycle right now, really bad information. However, it may be the clue we need. So, Sean, Brown, New Hampshire, is that it? it it's not it. But it's definitely a big step in that direction. You know, when people first threw out that idea, people kind of chuckled and said, oh, that's Scott Brown. But, uh, you know, now he seems to be pretty serious about it. Uh, and that's not a comment that you make if you're not at least taking seriously the idea of running for Senate in that state. Yeah, I don't think he means running against uh, the incumbent Ms. Shaheen is riding a motorcycle without a helmet. I think he means that he's going for it. And has, is she ready for him? She got the oppo ready. Yeah, you know, I mean, Elizabeth Warren uh, pulled out the playbook, pulled out all the stops, so Shaheen has that. Um, And, yeah, the fact that Brown is going to be a carpetbagger, of course, the state is a lot more Republican than Massachusetts, uh, so it's going to be an interesting race. Sean Trendy is the senior the senior elections analyst at Real Clear Politics, which you can read every 20 minutes if you want. He's also the co-author of a new book with his colleagues, The Almanac of American Politics 2014. Mary Kissel, thank you, Mary. Thanks, John. Of the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of WSJ.com's Opinion Journal each day at 1 p.m. I'm John Batchelor.